build, ship an image, and then we'll try to run it. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. So I'll go to the next slide. Yeah. So uh, if you want to do it uh, along the way, uh, you can uh, uh, clone this Git URL or uh, if you have your own Docker image, well and good. Uh, you can build that and ship it to Docker Hub. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, we can do this one. So in case you want to clone this, I have sent a link. Uh, or if you don't want to do it, then it's already uh, readily available in Docker Hub. So anyway, we'll use that one. And if you have some time left in the end, we can even you know do a build and push again and try another version. So that's how our sample app is. It, this app uh, has an API running at slash calculate underscore Fibnocchi. And uh, if I pass valid number, it just returns me any nth number for the Fibnocchi series. So we'll uh, deploy this app in Kubernetes today and see uh, how it runs and what are the things related to that. Yeah, so as uh, said before, uh, we clone that app or we have our own, we build it push it to a registry, in our case, Docker Hub, and then the service name, uh, your choice of name, and then we'll push it, and then this image is usable by the Kate cluster. Cool, so as stated earlier, the shortcut is this image is already available in Docker Hub, and we'll make use of this. So this is a little bit of uh, prerequisites or, uh, you know, the base to start with Kubernetes, that we have an image which is built uh, and stored in some Registry. Okay, so now let's go next. Yeah, so now uh, let's talk about Kubernetes. So, uh, Kubernetes. Yes, so Kubernetes uh, is a container management system. It runs uh, a managed containers application on a cluster. So, this is a cluster. Let me send the link on the way where we can get a playground. And uh, yeah, so what does this really mean that having a containerized uh, cluster which can manage our applications and do so many other things? So this apparently means what uh, Docker was not able to do for us or was very hectic for us to manage in Docker uh, is solved by Kubernetes. So in a layman's term, uh, this is what Kubernetes can do. So I can simply tell Kubernetes to create uh, n number of containers for a given image, uh, say if I, and then uh, maybe I can place an internal load balancer on top of these containers so that uh, the, the load is balanced and I don't have to manually you know, hit each container for the request. And uh, say it's a festival time and then the traffic goes up and or say it's a holiday time and we don't have so much traffic. Uh, based on that, we can grow our cluster and also add new containers or we can reduce them. And we can also add a public load balancer to these containers instead of having a internal one. And uh, then obviously we do time, ta time to time, we add new features to our application and then we want to, you know, roll out a new version. So we have to replace our old containers and get the new ones up and running. And uh, also during this upgrade, uh, our request uh, shouldn't be, uh, uh, you know, have a downtime and our customer can still keep on using our applications and this all should happen without any downtime. So this, in a layman's term, all this can Kubernetes can do for us, uh, which we had a little bit of uh, uh, trickiness while doing it from Docker or uh, Docker Swarm. Okay, and uh, yeah, so that's why we use Kubernetes. And then how do we do all these is, uh, we in a term that we create Kubernetes resources. So anything uh, we create or these API objects we do in Kubernetes are called resources. And all these uh, topics we discussed earlier uh, are achieved while creating some of these resources uh, based on our needs. And uh, that's how we manage all our containerized applications in Kubernetes. So some of them we'll talk uh, about on today's session, these resources. So one of them is pod, another one is a node resource, and then a service and a namespace. For now, uh, we really don't have to go into depth that what each of these resource means, uh, because one by one we'll see them in the next steps. So uh, for now, all good. Anyone has any doubt or I go ahead. 
Okay, so I assume that uh, let's go. Next. Yeah, Sumit, Sumit, I want to uh, like yeah. So, um, uh, maybe you can tell little more on like uh, pods and containers, little little basics. Then uh, maybe we can move forward. So why what is why pod why container? So we already have container then why pod. So this kind of stuff. Yes, yes. So I'll I'll be covering this in next slides. But uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So it's almost similar. Pods and container and pods pod is the basic unit, the I mean, smallest unit we do in Kubernetes. Uh, but uh, there are some few requirements which uh, are not met just having one single container or having units of container. So that's why in Kubernetes there's something called pods. So we'll discuss about that. This is a free playground provided by Kubernetes and Catacora so that we don't have to take an overhead of you know creating a cluster when we are just right away starting with the Kubernetes. So uh, OK, so the first thing, how do we talk to this cluster? So there is a CLI called uh, I call it kubectl. Uh, you can call it kubectl, kubectl or Cube control. It's your choice. So uh, this is just a tool, a command line tool, which allows us to talk to Kubernetes cluster. And uh, ultimately, uh, as it, the PowerPoint says that, that this tool is uh, built around Kubernetes API. So whatever we can do via kubectl can be done directly via Kubernetes API and uh, of course to uh, authenticate to our uh, API cluster uh, it uses some kube config uh, which at the moment also we really you know we really don't have to worry about in the playground because the settings are already set so uh, throughout the demo we'll be using this CLI and uh, some of its commands and uh, along the way I'll paste these commands in the chat as well yeah, so the first command uh, for today is kubectl get. So uh, the the how kubectl uh, command has a format or a syntax. So uh, the first thing is obviously kubectl and the second thing is verb like get or uh, create, delete, edit. Some of the predefined verbs uh, kubectl supports and all the way we have to use those verbs. And then the third thing comes is uh, for that verb, which resource you wanna work on, so let's try our first command, which will be kubectl get node. I'll paste this command in the chat for you to try. And also I'll show you how it looks like. So I'll say kubectl and then get as a verb and then node. Node is a API resource. And then it lists down me the node. So in this cluster, playground cluster, we only have one node. The node name is Minikube. Uh, the status is ready. And this node has a role as a master. Uh, so we didn't talk much about Kubernetes architecture, but uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster has two types of node. One is master and one is uh, a slave or just a node. Uh, and uh, these are used to run different type of workload, but for now it's okay. So we have a cluster and we have a node and this was our first command. We have something called pods in Kubernetes and uh, then the pods have multiple containers inside it. So the basic difference between a container and a pod is uh, uh, container is a running instance of image, right? And uh, certain workloads so or certain applications does not fit in uh, while running directly in a standalone container. So Kubernetes supports something like pods. And uh, in a pod, you can have one single container or you can have more than one container. So there are very few cases where uh, pods have more than one container. Uh, like uh, you have a app application along with you have a local cache which you wanna have in your container. So these two you can combine together and have one pod, which was not possible if you just go along with the container way of doing it. So that's why we have created the uh, means Kubernetes thought to go with pods. And the pod means all the container running inside a pod, a single one or multiple containers will share the same resource. So the pod will get uh, some RAM or CPU or network and volumes and all the containers will be sharing the same resources. And so uh, that's where uh, we will create our first pod. So I uh, showed you in starting that we already have image pushed in Docker Hub, or if you have your own, uh, you can use that one instead of this. And using this command, we can uh, you know, create our first pod and see how it looks. 
yeah this uh, sumit oswal whatever you are given right path uh, should yeah. i download that fibonacci flask generator code and then i can give that how is that uh no so in this case uh, as i'm doing it here i you don't have to download it so kubernetes will download this image on its oh. own we just have oh. to tell which image Okay. So if you just copy this command and paste it in your uh, playground, it should work. So I'll yeah. So I'm saying kubectl will run, uh, and I'm giving a name to the pod, first pod. I'm telling which image I want to use for this pod, and then kubectl has some uh, argument called generator to tell kubectl that you want to create a pod. So for that, it's run hyphen pod v1, and if I enter, then as it says that pod first pod is created and uh, by the second command uh, and one of our favorite kubectl get and this time the resource is no pods we can see if the pod is created or not okay i missed spelled kubectl get pods okay yeah kubectl get pods yeah, so it says that uh, yeah, there's a pod already created, and then it's uh, the pod status is it's creating the container inside it. So in our uh, scenario, the pod is only having one container, not more than one. So let's wait for some time. So until then, we can discuss what internally it does. So what now Kubernetes will do is uh, it'll go and fetch this image from Docker Hub. Because I just specified the public URL, or if we have our private, we can give the full URL. And uh, after uh, pulling the image, it will, you know, create a container out of it, and then other thing. If if you are uh, really interested to see what's going in the background, there is another uh, verb called describe. So I'll say kubectl describe, and I'll tell what I want to describe. So the, in this case, is the pod and the pod name. And it will tell me, you know, what is happening at the moment. So I have to show how does it? Yeah. So it says successfully assigned. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I think it was already created. So I'll clear this out. And I'll go back and run the same command again. Kubectl will get pods. And it, as it says that the pod is there and its status is running. And the age is 100 seconds. So hopefully you guys also have been able to create the same pod. Yeah, so this was the first thing we created in Kubernetes and one of the basic uh, smallest uh, resource in Kubernetes. And now we'll go back to the next step. Namespace is just like grouping the resources together. So it's like, you know, to manage them better. So can create a namespace put some resources there and when you want to delete it you can just simply delete the namespace so all the resources are deleted and uh, to identify say you have app a so all your app a resources are in app a namespace and app b in app b so it's just a way to create kind of a group like uh, in cloud uh, we have resource group same way we have namespace in kubernetes so till now we didn't uh, do much with uh, namespace but uh, of course now we can run a command and see how many uh, namespaces are existing at the moment with the same thing kubectl get and the resource type is namespace i paste the command in the chat and uh, i'll also execute it in the playground so as it says uh, there are multiple namespaces currently uh, one of them is default and some starting with cube hyphen node, cube hyphen public, cube system. So these are Kubernetes internal namespaces based on their ports or containers. Uh, Kubernetes get these uh, namespaces on their own. We don't have to worry. But for example, we created our first port. Uh, so where was that created? So in we didn't specify any namespace, so that means it was uh, by default going to a namespace called default. So and how do we do things? Specifying a namespace can be done via this. So I can say kubectl, and then I'll say get pods again the same thing, but this time I'll add a argument called hyphen n, or you can give a full name hyphen hyphen namespace, and then I'll say default. 
So this time it shows me the same thing again because by default, if we don't specify a namespace, it goes into default. So this is just to manage and create a logical boundary of resources so we can manage them together. And for from now on, we will not specify a namespace and we assume that, you know, everything we're doing it in default namespace. So that's another resource in Kubernetes after pods. And now let's go to the next one. Yeah, so now we have something called deployments. Uh, and now the question comes why we really need something like a deployment. So first let me tell what it is and then we'll see why we need it. So deployment is uh, a high level construct which uh, allows us to do multiple things like it allows us to do scaling and rolling updates and rollback and it can manage, you know, uh, internally it creates a replica set which can manage the number of replicas of the pod. So what does all this means is that uh, creating multiple pods on our own, like now uh, we created one, like that say we have a requirement and we have a lot of load to create three pods together and uh, scale them down or scale them up uh, based on the requirement is a little tough. So how do we all do this is by creating an object called deployment and once we create a deployment, we can tell deployment that uh, this is my image and uh, these many replicas I want of a pod. So the deployment will take care that every time uh, you need such replicas, it will do it for you. And also the another benefit of deployment is, uh, as we talked earlier, right, uh, that uh, today I have uh, version one of my image and then I added some new feature and now I want to roll it out. So as we said earlier that Kubernetes allows us to roll out the new uh, version of our image or new version of our code without uh, breaking the current running uh, pods or running uh, instances so that customers are not affected. So all these can be done by this uh, object called deployments. And if something goes wrong, we can also roll back our deployment to a previous version. So all these things uh, are stored uh, in metadata of deployments and that's why mostly in organizations, no one directly uses ports, they use deployments and then the deployments internally create ports. So that gets us to create uh, to create our first deployment. So I'll paste the command. Uh, the deployment is using the same image we used while creating a port, but uh, now we'll tell it to create, instead of one port, we'll tell it to create two replicas. So I'll just paste this command in the chat and I'll also show it on the playground. And of course, so once we create it to see that it's created or not, we'll use our favorite command again, kubectl get and the resources department. Okay, so I go back down now. Try to create the department. So I'll save this. And uh, just for, uh, in case you are having a difficulty pasting these commands in the playground, you can use a shortcut called shift insert, and then it will allow you to directly paste inside the terminal. Yeah, so this time I'm using the same command which we used previously, but this time I'm not giving a generator to create a port. So by default, the generator is creating a deployment. So I'm giving a name, first deployment, image, and of course, how many replicas I want of this deployment. So I hit enter. And it says there's a warning that something is deprecated, but let's ignore that. And then finally, it says the deployment.app slash first deployment is created. And then I run my next command, kubectl get deployment. No need to specify namespace because we are in default. And when I hit enter, it tells us that, okay, first deployment is ready, two out of two. That means total required was two. Currently ready are two. And then it says both are up to date. Since we already discussed previously that it allows us to upgrade. So right now, whatever upgraded version we want. First time we create, of course, it's already up to date because we have not rolled out a new version and both the ports are available. So this is how we create deployment. But deployment does something uh, internally, uh, which is another resource called uh, replica set. So how deployment uh, manages uh, this desired state of number of replicas 
is by this object called the cryptica cell. So when we say deployment, create two uh, ports of a image. The replica set is something which makes sure that it's always in that desired state. That you want two replicas, it always has two replica. And uh, yeah, so this replica set is only to manage and uh, the number of replicas. That's why the name says replica set. And the other capabilities like rolling upgrades and all are part of deployment. And then this is a low level construct which deployment creates on the go, which manages the number of replicas. And before you, if you are working on Kubernetes from some time, or if you have had a look around, there was something called replication controller, which was the same thing for uh, as the replica set. Uh, it was just a, you know, uh, a old version of it and it's deprecated, but both are same replication controller or replica set is the same thing. It uh, just, you know, help us to keep the desired number of pods is what replica set is. Uh, so, man, just a uh, quick question. I mean, this replica yeah. set is basically kind of a uh, failover cluster thing. Uh, I mean, can we relate with that? Uh, sorry, I didn't get you. I Means, uh, are you asking you want to create a replica set on your own, standalone? Um, no, I mean, does that define that this replica set is basically a kind of uh, failover cluster thing? Just like we have in um, uh, you know normal environments, whereas one cluster is responsible for serving the application, and other one is basically if something uh, fails in the existing one, then it uh, it's being taken care by the other one. Okay. Is it like that? Uh, no, no. It, it's yeah. I mean, it's not like that. Uh, in a way that here, uh, what we do is when we create multiple ports, obviously we think this way that uh, if one port for some reason goes down, then we have other ports available to serve the request. So that's where the uh, failover stuff happens, right? Having multiple ports instead of having one port. But the replica set is more on working at the level that you tell uh, Kubernetes that you want to handle this failover situation and you always want to have say five nodes, uh, five ports. And the replica set take care of making sure that every time you have at least that much of ports. By mistake, say if one port goes down, make sure that uh, you have a new port available. So it, it's more of like making sure you have that much number of uh, ports. Actually, that so also kind of, we can try. Kind of auto scaling, like uh, we mentioned a desired number of instances that are required, you know, to yes. uh, maintain yes. the load and, um, you know, the maximum number and the minimum number of instances required. Correct. Correct. Okay. So, yeah. So uh, the scaling happens at the replica, uh, sorry, uh, the deployment level means uh, we can tell deployment uh, based on the load. We can configure deployment in such a way that uh, you can have auto scaling, you know, means you can configure the rules, but then deployment will tell replica set that at this point I want n number of ports and replica set will make sure that n number of ports are there. So it's just, you know, it's like running all the time and checking, okay, I want five nodes. Do I have five? Ports. It's uh, just making sure that desired state is always maintained or not. So it does that. We can see this example here. So it, we didn't see how many ports this deployment created, but we can see now. So if I say kubectl get ports, it will show us. Uh, so in my case, it shows three port because we created first port uh, previously uh, as another task, and then two of these ports are of uh, our deployment. Uh, maybe uh, I'll reduce the size a little bit less. Yeah. So now what I'll do is I'll delete one of this port and the replica set will make sure that the desired number is two. So it will get back the port and make the number again two. So for that, uh, same thing, kubectl and the verb this time is delete. Uh, what we want to delete is a port and then which port is uh, in this case, I'll get the first one. So when I do this, we get an output saying that this port is deleted. Well, that's a great thing. But since we already have a deployment which internally has a replica set, it will make sure that two ports are running. So what you see is there is already a new port has come and replaced the old one. And if you see the age, it's 11 seconds. So replica set is making sure that all the time the required uh, state or the desired state is there. And uh, yeah, thanks so much. Ah, perfect. Not a problem. 
so now let's go to the next step so after replica set what we have is uh, yeah so now we created uh, containers in a way that we created ports and then we uh, went ahead and created deployment and now how do we access these uh, ports or this deployment we created so the kubernetes uh, allows us to expose these ports uh, in a way that it creates a internal load balancer and uh, uh, it, the load balancer uh, internal load balancer has a name called service so the we in kubernetes the resource is called service and this service is like internal load balancer on the all the ports and uh, how do we achieve it is we can uh, run a command called kubectl expose uh, which can expose our deployment and uh, then of course there are multiple number of services which we will talk in the next slides but uh, this is the first step so we expose a service and uh, this will be an by default an internal load balancer so i'll paste this command as well for you to try and i'll also do along the way also if you see in this command uh, it has uh, specified the port so i'm telling internal uh, service or the internal load balancer to uh, listen on port 80 and while uh, my container was running on port 80 so it like uh, it can do a binding like how we used to do binding in docker run and hyphen p we used to specify right the port where docker is running and the port which is running inside a container so let's do this uh, and then of course the name of the service which is first service so if i run this command in our playground it should expose a port ports and create a service for that yeah so as we see service first service exposed and then again same thing cubes it will get but this time it will be service to see and then you see there's a service called first service type is cluster ip that is the default and that means the internal and then we get a ip which is internal to the cluster and the port it's listening on port 80 but uh, we cannot access it because i'm currently outside of this cluster and i'm not inside the cluster so i cannot resolve to this ip address but uh, we'll uh, create a, another type of service called node port what does do is uh, it will uh, bind this service to another port which is on this machine and then I can access it from here. So I'll show you that as well. Uh, for that I have to do kubectl edit. So I'll edit the current service and I'll change its type. And then we'll discuss what this new type means for us. So first let's do it and then Okay, I think I missed what I missed is specifying what I want to add it. So I want to add it a service. Yeah. So it it opens a metadata of Kubernetes and then I can you know edit it like a Vim editor. So I'll not do much. All I'll do for now is uh, going and changing the type. So let's change. So instead of cluster IP, I'll make it node port. And I'll save it. And then it says that the service is edited. So what does this mean? For to understand that we'll go back and say get service. And this time we see that uh, this port uh, 80 of uh, service is mapped to another port and this port is accessible on the node not inside the cluster, but on the node level. And uh, that can be accessed uh, via this. So I can just say here, click on plus icon, and then I can say select port to view on my host one. So this is our host one, and then this will open a new, comma, a new terminal for me, and then I can specify this port number, which is 31272. 31272. Okay, num lock on three one two seven two. Yeah, this will take some time. Okay, URL not found because by default uh, the app is not listening on the default URL. So I have to attach the path, and the path is calculate underscore fibo key. 
question mark and I'll pass a parameter. Since it's a free playground, uh, this will take some time to resolve. But uh, hopefully you also have been come this way. Or if anyone is having an issue in between, then uh, we can, you know, resolve that. Let's see. Okay, until then I can, as we see, there is another service running here called Kubernetes. Uh, that's Kubernetes internal service. But somewhere there is also a, a service running called Kubernetes dashboard. Okay, why it says not found. Did I miss something? Yes, I missed. I think there was a spelling mistake. Yeah. So if you see, uh, as I said earlier, this uh, sample service returns and Fibonacci's number. So in this case, when I asked the third number, it gave me the value. If say I asked the 10th number, it should return me the new value for that 10th Fibonacci one. Yeah, but uh, we are able to access the service thanks to NodePort. And now let's uh, fall back at what does this not port means for us. Yeah, so here we come. As we saw, uh, we have various service types. Services are helping us to uh, do a load balancing on our ports. By default, we get uh, the service uh, uh, named cluster IP. The, that is an internal load balancer and gives us a cluster IP, which is available within the cluster. Uh, and then we use something called not port. So not port uh, also does more or the less same. So it's internal load balancer with the internal cluster IP, but at the same time, it binds that uh, service port to the nodes port. So I had uh, uh, Kubernetes node access right via that terminal. And uh, in same way, uh, if you have access to Kubernetes nodes, you can expose the services to uh, the nodes port and then you can access via that. So that's a way if you want to access these applications outside uh, your cluster. But for sure, uh, binding these uh, node ports at your uh, cluster machines is not a cool way. So for that, we have another service types called load balancer. So this service uh, creates a load balancer on the cloud provider where our cluster is running. So if your Kubernetes cluster is running on say AWS or Azure or Google Cloud, then when we give the service type as load balancer, it will create a uh, public load balancer on that cloud provider and it will have its own public IP. And using that public IP, we can access this application. And then we also have a fourth uh, service uh, type called external name. So this is something internal to a uh, cluster DNS service which runs within the cluster and you can create a C name record. So you can say you can, you know, have your custom name like uh, abc.service.com and uh, then the internal cluster DNS make sure that this uh, DNS record is resolved. But again, only within the cluster because it's specific to only cluster DNS service, not outside the world. So mostly any um, applications running on Kubernetes today and are uh, visible to you means they are public services are mostly coming via public load balancer. So this is the preferred one, but for testing we can also use NodePod. Okay, and then finally, uh, as we mentioned earlier, the deployment allows us to do the updates. Uh, I can do the upgrade to the current uh, deployment using this command. I can paste this command on the chat again and you can try. So whatever deployment we created, uh, this is a new image uh, or say a new version of our uh, application. And uh, this will, since, roll out, uh, since deployments allows us to do new updates to our application, uh, I can do that. So I'm uh, telling set image. I'm giving my deployment name and I'm telling that use a new image, which is this at the moment. And I'm also telling that uh, keep the records. Records are true. That means the deployment will keep the rollout history on this. So, 
as I entered the command, it said, yeah, your comment image is updated. And uh, to see the rollout history, uh, we can use this command. So I'll paste this command as well. So that's how in CI CD, you know, every time a new update happens. Uh, and then the history is available for us. So if we want to roll back, something goes wrong, we can do. So yeah, so it's, if I do the history, maybe let me clean it up so you can see it better. Yeah, so it shows us the first one is none. That's the one when we created the deployment first time. And this is the second one when we updated it using this command. So it shows that this change caused this. And then if you want to roll back also, we can, you know, roll back saying kubectl um, roll out undo, I guess is the command and I can tell the deployment name and it will, yeah. So as you see, it says the rollout is rolled back. So that's how the deployment helps us to update and also to roll back. This command also I have listed in the chat. So that brings us to uh, uh, the one part of this uh, session at the closer level. And then all we did is now is using all the command lines, right? But uh, of course, when we want to do more customization or uh, want to add more metadata, it's a little bit difficult using command lines. So that's where we use uh, uh, the YAML files to define these settings. For that, uh, Shalice will show us uh, the next steps. Shalice, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so maybe if anybody have any question or did they? On? Yes, we can say it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, just let me know when when I can start. Yeah. Okay. So if you guys have no questions, maybe because I'm going to go through. Everything what Sumit did via command, I'm going to go through what it takes to go with a YAML or a JSON, most probably YAML. And uh, going going to like just to give little more add-ons, like so he added little, uh, he already told about lame spaces, he already told about pods, service and deployments. So I'm just, I'm just going to add little more on top of it and cover it like that. And maybe just you can ping in or interrupt me if you have any questions in between. So yeah, starting. Okay, uh, so uh, guys, uh, you you guys already know what is a namespace, right? So uh, like, you have a big physical cluster, like a Kubernetes cluster, and then namespace you can assume like a virtual cluster which is backed by a physical cluster. So a cluster, as in it has everything, it has resources, it has a kind of a, a boundary, kind of a scope. And then uh, if you have so many type of users and then you can assume it as a way to divide those users and maybe you have so many teams working on it. Uh, you have so many teams, you have so many, so for example, you have dev stage and you have a single cluster. So maybe namespace can be one of uh, the use cases for there. And also namespace gives you a scope for a name. Uh, it kind of, it can be a boundary to a name so any resource, so whenever you create a resource, right, as someone said, it's a Kubernetes resource, resource API object. So they have their names, right? So for example, when you are designing infrastructure for your uh, production level infrastructure, so you, you have to make sure that your namings are perfect because names are like 40% of your confusions are done, uh, gone when you have a proper naming. And then for example, when you have a restrictions on names, then it becomes very difficult. So namespace is one of the like lifesaver over that in that situation and then there are so many other benefits of namespaces and yeah so it's not like uh, for example if you have a different version of a uh, uh, kind of uh, applications you get a different different namespaces it's just like uh, it, it, it also gives you a way of uh, segregating resources and when you have a team, for example, you can create a team-wise namespace or you can create a vertical-wise namespace. Maybe you have a different namespace for dev, different name for the stage. 
and that's what that's that's a few example yeah after that we will go to um, something called uh, kubectl yeah he already explained kubectl i just wanted to add little more on, on kubectl so um, you can see right kubectl is available i mean the slide for kubectl is available yeah so yeah. Uh, this is the format so i'm just trying to make it simple for example when you see the same thing twice it becomes a little like familiar so kubectl then the, there is a command so that command can be an operation so as he said right it's a verb you can relate it to a verb for example you want to create any resource you can do create you want to get any resource you can do get you want to delete it you can do delete describe describe there are, there are so many other for example you have to, you have something called config and so many others and then you have a type so what is type type here is a resource type so there are different different resource types right so uh, you can say resource type in 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 cloud we say resources in kubernetes you can say object type maybe it can be a pod it can be a replication controller replica sets deployment uh, and it can be ingress service it can be so many other yeah so and name what is a name a name is a, a kind of a, a label not label but it can be a name given to your resource and then there are flags so there can be a flag like hyphen s so there are so many different flags which you can use accordingly but it is an optional so flag is an optional and then um, when you are doing get maybe uh, your uh, like uh, the last one last one is a optional feature yeah yeah so uh, now going to the third one okay i think uh, uh, sumit already did this right so kubectl Cube get namespace i mean uh, you can see right so uh, you can use either small namespace or you use you can use a different a combination of uh, like lower case upper case it will give you the same so basically there are four default namespaces in our case there were five because there was a kubernetes dashboard but usually you will see these four namespaces all around okay the first one is default so uh, that is where we land for the very first time whenever we create anything without specifying where it should go so that's a default namespace so here uh, what happens is like for example uh, when you are in dev and you don't you don't know what is the uh, capacity i should give to my pod then you can use this namespace namespace level of settings where you can say that okay this this is the minimum capacity should be given to my nodes should be given to my pods yeah there is something called cube system and then this is very uh, important namespace so maybe uh, you should not try messing with it yeah so all your uh, kubernetes uh, uh, objects so whatever it is used by your uh, cluster maybe uh, there are so many uh, like ingress will be there for example you have uh, these 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 level of object which are already there uh, for for a cluster that is managed that is that is used for a kubernetes system that is placed over here there is a cube cube public yeah so guys so guys if you don't uh, list, uh, like if, if there is a break in a voice maybe you can uh, like ping and then i can recontinue yeah so you can see cube public is there and then yeah so there is a node list is one more example of a namespace is like you can actually do a rbac so you can do a restriction on a uh, kind of a, a namespace level so that you you are only restricted to this particular namespace and then there is this called node node list so maybe this is not use i mean it is not useful for us as of now and then if you if you want to know more about no more on this you can give a read yeah so um uh, first and first and first most important thing is like when we are going to create let's say we are going to create a dev environment and then uh, there are so many uh, um, teams sitting on there and they have their own dev environment so what we do is like instead of placing every resource in a default namespace what we do we place it in a new namespace which we create okay so guys did you follow till now uh did you yeah. guys follow yeah. yeah yes yes we could able to follow yeah okay so um you can see right there are there are like so one was the imperative way uh, like that you can do like for example you say cube ctl create and then give a uh, sorry create is your um, command that is an operation then you say a type that is a namespace then you give a name name of a object sorry name of a uh, namespace that is one way but here there is another way Uh, for example you want to st store the state as a file you want to put it in repo this is there are two ways you can which you can do it you can either write it in json if you are familiar with json if you like json you can do it in this way and then you can do it in uh, a yaml format yeah 
so um any questions till now guys then uh, I'll, i'll i'll go through and then uh, maybe i'll explain every component for example you have an api version okay how do i know what why it is v1 for here and then when i go to deployment there is some something else some something other some other api version yeah what is kind and what is metadata and then how do i uh, like when i am writing it so what is what are few more few common things which is in every api objects sorry in every kubernetes objects so yeah so maybe i'll uh, start uh, on then like maybe i'll connect to that dashboard this one okay so till this come comes up we go over here and we try to understand uh, what is api version so any leads anybody want to say what is api version anybody wants to add what do you mean by api version and yeah cool so they all are api objects and then every object they have their own specific version available so we have to make sure that we uh, our uh, the type of an object which is a kind and a version they both match and then uh, then we go at uh, in uh, like in detail so for example i am a very newbie and then i just knew what is namespace so for example i knew namespace and i want to explore on namespace and i also know cube ctl right cube ctl cube cutl okay uh there are so many verbs so for example i want to know more on um, namespace so i just say explain and then i say n a m e s p a c e okay when i do this so in my case i have to scroll maybe i will uh, do a full screen uh is it okay now guys uh Yes. Please, please acknowledge. Let's 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 work in a TCP three-way handshake mode. <laughs> yeah. So when I did Kubo Serial explain uh, namespace, you can see the kind is a namespace. So you have to be like a case. Your your case should be like this. Capital N, uh, capital N. It should be starting and and the version. So this is where you get it. So if you want to understand more on like for example, it can you can compare it as a manual page for um, Kubernetes. and most of the api objects they have this table version v1 and then there are some like if we talk about deployment they have apps v1 if we talk about ingress they have apps v1 so how do i know that so we we know right so we have two components which is uh, um api version and kind and then we if you want to know more we just go ahead and find it out and get it from here so let's go ahead and create a namespace sorry you can use control l to clean yeah yeah so uh, cube ctl get namespace yeah uh, what you can do is you guys can use um, alias maybe kgn for get names uh, for namespace so in this case as i said right so we have default node leads cube public and cube system so um, first of all let's make a directory m k d i r let's call it uh, k a s demo we do c d k a s demo and make dir namespace yeah so we go to namespace okay so we create a file so i really like uh, um yaml i am very used to with yaml so i'll go ahead with the yaml so you can do, go and do it namespace dot yaml okay so the first thing is one more thing i i think i'd like to explain is like you have you use that concept of camel casing so uh, you you guys might be familiar with camel casing right so if you have a two words in one then your second part of your word is start with the uh, upper case so you have to take care so you just do 
insert you are only in insert mode you just do api version colon and then you already saw it was v1 you just give v1 enter and kind so in this case your kind is name space now there is third thing called metadata so this is also a, a mandatory field so metadata is like you are giving uh, information so you are, you are attaching more information for in this case you want to have a name for your namespace so you, you just say metadata and so in this case as you can see that right, so it has its own type of alignment if you go in vi it will give like this so it's always uh, good to use either uh, i i use two spaces so here it is difficult but when you do in actual vi it becomes easy so give name and then uh, let's give, give as a ka test demo we also wants to want to label it l a b e l s so anybody if they, if anybody wants to add something on labels what do you think uh, labels are and why do we use it so what label should we give we should say that uh, it's a stage is yeah somebody was trying to speak dev and when we do alt e we do wq is it mandatory to specify labels it is not mandatory it's an optional uh, so it's you're just giving a key value okay. i mean an extra identification that that can be useful when you are actually trying to search or maybe you are trying to do some some sort of operations on top of it for example if you have so many name spaces and you you want to give like uh, maybe you have uh, your name is already already a unique stuff for name space but if you want to have extra uh, feasibility to identify and then uh, uh, kind of stuff so you're just giving extra name pair it's not a mandatory stuff yeah so uh, moving forward so uh, now uh, if i do cat and do a namespace.yaml i can give i can see it and then um, what i have to do is i just want to create a namespace right so kubectl create for create since it is a file minus f and then give a file name okay what is the error guys can you can you just error validating namespace.yaml error validating data api version not set okay so what do what could be the error here spelling it's it's version not person so alt e and uh, skip to the queue so uh Ideally, let's check it here again. Yeah, it is. Okay, guys, what what if if I execute this again? What what do you think you will get? Zero error, right? Uh, any specific error? Like conflict namespace already exists, something like that. Yeah, it will say like you have. Uh, already in namespace.yaml and you have a namespace called kts so how do you see that we'll just do kubectl kubectl get namespace so if you want to do like say lowercase all lowercase and a m e s p a c it works if you want to like say okay um, by mistake you do it like this again it works and then yeah so it's not that case sensitive so as you can see right so we when we do like this we can see we have a new namespace created from 3 seconds ago and now we saw few commands right so we need to kubectl get pods we don't have any pods so you can see that right? so it's like no resources found in default namespace so current namespace which we are in it's a default namespace so if you want to see something in our namespace you just do n k h s i can demo so it will say no resources found in k h s demo k h s namespace yeah so till here any questions
things are clear how do you communicate across uh, the namespace What's communicate the across the name yeah okay yeah. okay so for example you have a pod or uh, let's not take a pod uh, maybe because we uh, since we have uh, like a service for us for us a service is like a endpoint because you you remember right so you had an endpoint which you po posted in the uh, browser and you got some reply so yeah. for us if you want to uh, like communicate internally so we will use service so in that is maybe we can we can also use you no know, node code but that's not a uh, proper solution because we are we want to communicate within a cluster so we'll say we will use a cluster ip and also if you don't use cluster ip we can just say service and namespace dot service name so when you say default uh, uh, dot service name and then when you try to hit this with a, a proper dns name given to that service you are able to communicate so maybe uh, okay. we can we can demonstrate in later yeah fine yeah so you you can use a service because service is like uh, your um, a, you can consider as a load balancer internal load balancer and then uh, that's a, that's the only endpoint you you are care, you're caring about so you don't care about the pod you care about the service so you just you just have a service every service has a dns to it internal dns you can use that dns which is available internally and then hit it yeah yeah cool so we have a namespace now uh, uh, second thing what uh, sumit showed was um, let's go outside and then and do ls here we can see uh, we were in kate as demo right we had two uh, we had a folder called namespace now we'll create a folder called pod so we are going to pod and we'll do vim and we are going to say uh, pod dot yaml Okay, so now you guys have to help me over here. Okay, what is the API? What what should I write here for the first time? So I'm writing an F uh, YAML for my pod. So what should be there? Uh, I think you guys are not following. API version. API version. API. Yeah, API version. Okay, what is the API version for a pod? V one. V one. Yeah, so you can go ahead and verify the API version from kubectl explain, and then you can say pod. It will give you. Then there is something called kind. Kind. What is the kind? It's a pod. 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 You have metadata. Um, you have metadata. So. So let's go with this this uh, uh, method. So for example, you can use tabs or spaces, but use only tabs or only spaces. Don't mix it; it'll give you an error. It is always better to use. I use two spaces from here, and then uh, I say a name. So since it is a Fibonacci, so I say Fibo. Okay, and uh, labels. So. What labels should I give? App is a key and Pibo is a value. Okay, this you are familiar with this much stuff, right? So we had this much, this many steps in our namespace. So we have extra. I think somebody is on, not on mute, and that is giving an issue. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so you have another thing called spec. So these are four components, which is like. Um, Common across everything. Okay, guys, what do you understand by uh, pod? So as Sumit told, right? So pod is like uh, you have it manages containers. In the Alex, it manages one or more containers. So in uh, the first thing in my pod will be, in my specification will be containers. Okay. So uh, and con every container should have a name. So let's give a name. That will be a Fibo in this case. Uh, uh, Sumit, can you ping me the uh, image? You have an image. 
Ah, I think so. It is Sumit. Yeah, yeah. Saiwal. Uh, just connect me over here. It is Bebo. And ACCI underscore flask. And the tag is one. That's the first version. Yeah. What do you, what what else do you think we need for for a container, guys? Obviously ports, right? Slash, yeah. So we have a port. Underscore flask, yeah. Okay, so we have a port that is a container port. That is, what is the port for your, for your container? 80? Yes. Okay, what else you have extra? Uh, I think so, your, your, um, um, Sumit, your, Shell is tag is latest. Okay, you have a latest tag. Cool. I'll edit it. And then you don't need any extra command arguments to start your container, right? So when you just run it, it starts. Okay. So till now, uh, you have a little spell mistake over here. And 80. you guys. Okay, 80, 80. Container. So, eighty eighty looks cool. Nothing extra. We are going with very uh, like very minimal basics. So we do Alt E and W Q. It, it is eighty or eighty eighty. Uh, Sumit should confirm. It is eighty, 80 right? Isn't it is eighty eighty. Okay. Okay. Our service, our service had port 80, which was binding to 80. Oh. Okay, so oh. guys, what do you think? Uh, we missed it. I am sure we missed something. What do you think we missed it? So one thing we missed it, we didn't specify namespace in which namespace it should go. By default, it, should, it will go in a, a kind of a, a default namespace. Mm -hmm. So when we want this to go in some particular namespace, what we can do, uh, either we can have namespace over here in metadata. So we say namespace and give the namespace name. But when you do this, you're actually hard coding it. So uh, what you can do is uh, Alt E and then Q. You can just see like uh, you have a cube serial create, right? Maybe I'll type it. Cube serial create minus f port dot yaml and uh, pass hyphen n so there are two ways when you use single letter you just pass hyphen when you use the full names full name you just do hyphen hyphen so that's that is global across uh, i mean uh, linux so that is being followed over here also yeah so okay we have created our our um, port so how do we check our pods kubectl yeah. get po you can do it will give you so it says that you don't have um, no resources found in default namespace it what do you minus think? minus n k8 demo that you have to give right case you get pod minus n k8 demo yeah okay okay suppose what i want is like i i i don't want to give minus n all the time so how do i actually make sure that i am i am going to that namespace so you can do like this, kubectl config set context and you want to set the current context, you can do current and you want to do a namespace, name, spac and that should be, uh, what is your namespace? That is your k8s demo, I think so this should work. Okay, so when you do like this, kubectl get po. Yeah, just a moment. I think so. This screen is bigger. So, did you guys follow? Yeah, is it yeah. kc config? Yeah, set I hyphen will... context, right? Set context. So, can you please pause set the hyphen commands. context. I will, uh, I'll just put it over here. Uh, so, this is the one. I'll maybe I'll paste it in the chat 
Uh, Sumit already told you, right? So if you want to know more on your what your application is doing, if you want to check logs for your application, so uh, you just do Q logs um, um, minus F and then FIVO. Ideally, it should give you the logs of this FIVO uh, application. Yeah, so you have your starting unicorn and your application is ready. And now you just do control C. Okay, uh, if you want to know more, like you just do kubectl describe. There are so many like other stuff. So uh, I think you guys followed till here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what is the next thing? Uh, uh, what is the next thing you think we should go on? So you know, you know, let's relate it. For example, uh, you have a pod, and then there is there are a few things like when you have some things in production, you have to have a self healing mechanism that is provided by your uh, Kubernetes. You have uh, you have something called desired state. So let's not bring in auto scaling and auto descaling because uh, we, we just say that okay we have this particular stuff like uh, desired state when you when you say that you, I have fine number of pods should be running and then then when the pod runs they have specific checks when they do so you see you can see right so you have one on one ready right there are a few things which we are not going in detail uh, for example for your pods to be healthy there are a few things uh, your pods checks so your 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 port whatever passed in that uh, pod. It's coming up, and then you can do something on top of it. For example, you can do health check and sort kind of like. So it helps that the uh, kind of it decides whether your pod is uh, ready to serve an application. So now you you have this all definition done. Then now you want to say that okay, I want to have this much of desired state. That's where your um, replication controller or replica set comes into picture. Maybe I can uh, give one example of um, a replica set. Then I can move into um, deployment. Okay, so before going to replica set, we just uh, go ahead and check uh, on replica set, R E P L I C A S E T. So when you see, right, so you have a different kind. Kind is replica set. This is the name and this is the version. Okay, um, so quickly we'll write a small YAML. Sorry. Q. L, uh, sorry, clear. Control L. Yeah, so uh, we'll go back. Uh, we'll do LS over here. We can see. Okay, okay, let's demo and then we'll make another folder called RS. Right, we'll go to RS and then we do VIRS.yaml. So now, now I think you guys will guide me till here. So uh, quick, quick guidance, come on. API uh, version. API version is uh, what is the API version? Apps version one. Apps slash v1. So is this correct? It's not this slash. It is this slash. Sorry, this slash. Uh, it is not API T version. It is API version. So we do. Oh shit. I'll go in this mode because I am very used to uh, pressing escape. Okay, and now we have kind. So do let me know, guys, if it is not visible, I'll uh, expand it more. Is it fine? So we have this kind of uh, uh, replica set. We have kind, uh, sorry, we have metadata. Let's give a uh, FIBO. Your screen is frozen. That's what I could do. Uh, yeah, I think no, no, it, I have to, it's I have to go a little yeah. slow. Okay, I have to go a little slower. So, uh, see, you can give labels to your um, replica set. That's uh, um, if you don't want, you can. Uh, it's, it's okay if you don't give. And then uh, let's give a label, uh, maybe. So uh, I have that label, right? The stage. So it is a dev. Stage is dev. Okay. So we have spec. So what do you think will go in spec for a replica set? So obviously, first thing is replicas. 
right? Let's say we want to have two replicas or maybe three replicas. Cool. And you have a selector. So these are mandatory fields in uh, replica set. The mandatory field is a replica set. So um, see, uh, when, if you're using kind of a, sorry, if you're using replication controller, you have, you don't just give a key value, but when you're using replica sets, so you just say match labels. Okay, so what is the label you want to match? So in this case, you have a, you have a pod already created, but you don't want that pod to be um, uh, mapped by, ma uh, kind of managed by this replica. So let's say app equals to uh, FIBO1. Sorry. And what else are we missing? So if you want to check, right, if it is alignment is there, this or not, so you can just check it like this. So you need to go one more back. You go here. Okay, Sharish, obviously. Sharing the screen, I can't see anything. Uh, are you not able to see my screen? No. Yeah, we could able to at least I could able to see. Yeah, actually I'm joining from phone and uh, my uh, desktop, so I can see on my phone. Maybe, uh, yeah, please disconnect and connect. It will be visible for me. It happened and it's uh, visible now. Yeah, uh, till then we can wait. Maybe, uh, you, uh, yeah. Yeah, what do you think we are missing over here? So you guys are aware of, uh, you guys are aware of auto scaling group, right? HP, you want to say HP anything? No, no, no. So you are you are aware of auto scaling group in AWS. So when you create an yes. auto scaling group, you have something called launch template, right? So where you decide. Yes. Uh, so in same case, there is a pod template. So you just say template, and then um, let's let's not make it here. It is at the selector level. So you have to make sure on which level it should be. You can match it like this. Cool. Um, let's go down. Okay. So now let's repeat because we know, right? So we don't have to repeat our, we know what and all we had in pod. So we had API version, we had metadata, we had kind. So in this case, your replica set manages only pods. So you don't have to specify uh, API version and kind. So you start with metadata. So do let me know if you guys didn't follow this. So metadata is what is the metadata for your pod? So let's give a name for your pod. That will be FIBO1. And labels for a pod. Sorry. Labels should be, what should be the label here? Uh, we have somebody who is not on mute. Yeah, so label, label should be this one. Okay guys, what else? What else we are missing? We are missing the pod spec. So let's compare like this. So you have this, this stuff, right? So you, your template includes pod template, which includes API version and kind. So now you start with metadata. And metadata after that you have a spec. Uh, now when you go when you have a spec, you go here, you have containers. And containers as in you can have multiple containers. So you go with containers. Name should be let's go, go with Fibo one and image. So Sumit, uh, what is the image? S U M I T. Cywall, uh, please correct me if it, there is some mistake. And uh, Fibo, Naki, underscore. It is CCI. CCI, underscore, flask, cool, latest. 
Okay, uh, what else we have to specify? Force, I guess. So it is everything what we had in your um, pod. So uh, minus container port. That should be. What is a container port? Eighty, eighty, I believe. And then when we do escape wq, sorry. Four yes. number of pod. No four. It is three, right? So this pod is which we created before. That is not managed by this one. So we have, if you can see, right? So this replica set has three desired state. Okay. So when we go ahead and just do kubectl uh, delete, and we are going to delete a pod, and that has a name called. Uh, Maybe I'll just control V from here, paste. So when we delete like this, uh, 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 what is that? Keep CTL delete for, uh, maybe I have missed it. Not this one. You is not right, but yeah. I don't need to this Pod one. Here. Yeah. yeah. So it is deleted. Sorry. I have stuck. That will create one more now. Okay. Yeah, so that is the main concept behind uh, kind of a, uh, Replica set. So when you just go ahead and do get pods again, sorry, uh, get pod. So you will see um, 21 seconds. Yeah. yeah. So yep. uh, I hope you guys followed till here. Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, one more thing you should be able to, for example, if you see the labels, right? So there was a label called app equals to FIBO1. So this guy is not having that label. It is having FIBO. That's the reason it is not managed. So if I go ahead and delete this, right? So kubectl delete uh, board PO. And if I do FIBO, it doesn't care. Your replica set doesn't care. Uh, there is yes. an issue. So yeah, it doesn't get deleted. It won't get restarted. It, it will not, it's, there is no concept of restarting over here because it will create a new pod from that template you have mentioned. So you have already mentioned that this is the template. You go ahead and pull that yeah. image. So suppose, for example, you have some pod already there and you want to manage them as well. So you can give that label. So label is like uh, you are giving a key value and then you are saying your replica set, those, those, all people, those are pods who are having this key value, you manage them. So this is how your uh, kind of you can say it's a service discovery also. This is how your replica set is discovering your uh, pods. It's not only for managing; it's also for routing the traffic too. So um, not exactly, but because service uses selector to find the uh, kind of an, uh, pods and then attaches to a backend kind of a, in load balancer you do, and then then it things flow. So uh, I assume I'm clear till here. One question. Yeah, please. In the ML file, for some of the fields we give hyphen, right? And some of the yeah. fields we don't give. So for which yeah. field we need to give hyphen? Uh, sorry, we'll go back here. It's like, uh, just a second, I'll just do a cat and then we'll just go ahead, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cat uh, rs.yaml. So here, right, so I mean, you can have in this in this field, right, you can have either image as a hyphen or a name as a hyphen. This is any any root element can have an hyphen, and then that's that's how it works. Oh, that is the uh, convention. Like for the root element, yeah. you yeah. So it. any element you can make image as a root element. For example, you can say image. You can replace this, and then have a hyphen over there. Uh, in the metadata, it was four lines above. For the name, uh, it didn't use. So yeah. It, it, it's not a root element, okay. Uh, it doesn't need it. I mean, maybe I can go in detail on this topic and then I can revert back to you. But as of now, we can go that we don't need it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. Go ahead. Uh, shall I move forward? Because we have things to cover, a uh, little more things to cover. Okay. Uh, now uh, we we just do PWD. Okay, guys, can you tell me the full form of PWD? Anybody? Open question. Print working directory. Oh, it's a print. It's a it's a print working directory. So when you do man pwd, uh, I think so you'll get the print working directory. Is it visible? All no. Maybe you can yeah, check in the yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah. So we'll uh, go ahead and make. Uh, 
a deployment and then we'll make a service and then we'll finish it off yeah yep yeah so we are here ls why we are coming i'm coming outside get demo make your deb okay i'll do cp rs rs dot yaml deployment and then deb dot yaml so just to make sure that we are not wasting time writing again everything so what do you think guys we need to change we need to change uh, uh do you think this will work i mean just changing this will work so if you see um, we have a deployment so we uh, we have everything of uh, okay guys what do you think how many number of pods should be having now three right uh, we already have for replica set right so do we do you think we'll have three why it is six okay so you, if you see right so if you do uh, sorry so when you do qctl get all so get all means everything in this particular namespace so you can see you have six pods you have one deployment but you have two replica set you remember right we created only one that is fibo but you can have you see you can you are having another more one more any any uh, anybody wants to add something why why is it like that yeah so uh, you know uh, as uh, sumit mentioned right so deployment is a it's like uh, it's it's a declarative it sends a declarative updates to your pods and it manages it so for example you have to set uh, you have to do rollbacks you have to do canary deployments this is the purpose but at the back end it it creates and manages replica sets so when you said like this it created a replica set with this configurations if you can see uh am i clear yes no no yeah please, please see, already we says. had uh, already we had one replica set with three pods yeah. uh, since you created that, a deployment that is this one also has a replica set of three that's why it's yeah. created new one yeah no so what happens when you create a deployment so deployment actually at the back end it will create a replica set okay so this is the replica set which created so if you can see right so this your uh, this, is, this this is the one which we created which is in the, which is there in rs.yaml this is what it is created by you can see the timestamp also this is created by yes. deployment yes. so yes. And, yes. yeah and these pods are managed by deployment so you have your pods managed by deployment name and hyphen some number and then like this so in this case we are having everything with a fibo so if you have different different you got the concept of namespace right so every resource for example if you want to create a new pod with a fibo you will not be able to if you create a new pod with a, a new deployment with a fibo name you will not be able to create in same namespace but if you want to create in another namespace obviously it's possible yeah um any any questions as of now or should i move to service yeah fine Thanks. yeah so i can i can i'll show you that uh, um, i i can i'll show you that for example um, so let's go inside uh, deployment.yaml right and then let's show, show you what is the uh, difference i'm going here and i want to change this image i want to make it as um uh, sumit uh, you remember the name of that image maybe i can just do like this 
Uh, I can just say um, has. Sorry. I can say has, and then I can say, sorry. Um, I I got it. So why why I can say p when I say p. Uh, that the image which you use right master underscore five that was OS geeks the one uh, yeah the tag was master underscore five and then I think so it was um, OS group geeks and CI demo if I am not wrong the registry name was CI demo and then repository name was OS group C yeah sorry CI demo and this is my registry. Sorry. Oh yes, just give me a moment. Oh yes, X. Oh yes, group X. X. So um, when I just go ahead and do, okay. So when it when I change it, I can just do it cube CTO. Apply, apply minus f dev dot yaml. Okay, and then when you go ahead and do kubectl get po, what do you what do you make out over here? Any observation you want to point out? Uh, guys, am I audible? Hello. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah, what is that? Uh, do you think uh, what is that? What is that is happening? And the image is... it will try to pull, it is trying to pull the new image, right? And the, the port may restart now. Yeah, you know what the deployment, what it is doing, there is a, a default feature of rolling update in the deployments. So, what it does is it will first create a new image, it will not delete any container. When that container, new image container passes, then based on default settings, it will it will start deleting the old one one by one till your whole container. So in this case, for example, if you see right, so the image which I use, it's a faulty image. It will not have your container running. Yeah. So um, there are some other settings we need to do just to control this, but it is like it is it's working over here. Like we have to have other settings like. Uh, um, so do you remember right? So we have that. Uh, um, your image is pulled and it is not uh, uh, kind of a, uh, probes. You have to have a probe, then you can say that your image is like uh, successfully running. Then only you go to the next one. So in this case, you can see there are two pods, two pods which 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 are affected, and then this will keep restarting until and unless your pod becomes healthy. So we will revert it back. The, the good uh, thing is uh, the uh, the current application which is running is not affected. It so, is not affected. Uh, maybe when we have a service, we can actually have that uh, demo, right? Uh, I'll just delete it and delete this one. So the escape is creating a problem on DD. And so when I just go ahead and do Alt E and then WQ. So you can do using kubectl edit. I'm doing using apply. So when we go and do kubectl get pro, so you can see, right? So your old, your running images are not at all um, affected. I mean, I think so it's not. This one is like latest, latest one. You have at least one pod which is already running. Then uh, when you do again, so you can have all the pods back to the running state. Does uh, this make sense? Maybe we are going to have another session. I mean, in detail on this, like in every particular API object, this is for a starter, just to give you a look and feel how it looks like. Yeah. So quickly, I'll just create um, another folder. I'll come uh, one step outside. Sorry. Maybe I'll come here and then I'll just go create demo and make directory SVC. SVC is for service. I'll go to SVC and I do BIM. Uh, SVC.yaml. So you can use JSON also. 
So API version, uh, API version is V1. You can just go ahead and check it. It is small V1. And then kind is service. And metadata is uh, metadata is. OK, metadata is, let's give a name. Give a name called FIBO. And then we don't need labels for service. Let's not make it as of now. Maybe you, if you want to, you can put it a label so that uh, stage equals to uh, dev. OK, we have something called spec. So now we want to say uh, our service. This is the particular, and these are particular uh, applications, sorry, pods. With these tags, you have to connect to. So what is the tag which we used? Sorry, not tag. What is the labels which we used? So labels are app. Okay. No, so um, so this, this is the label for your pod. So the dev, whatever stage dev was labeled for your namespace. So yeah, now you have your app. Now you want to say um, you want to specify on ports. So remember, Sumit gave a port list saying that, OK, this is the port. So you can say, like, you want to give a name for a port name. If you don't want, you can you can skip that. Let's say um, Flask. Or maybe you can say app port. Um, port. And uh, what is the port? So this is the port of your, maybe you can do 8888, any port which you like to, your service to run on. And then there is something called target port, T-R-G-E-T. -E so this is the port where our application is running. So application is running on 8080. So when you don't do it, when you just submit like this, and uh, when you do WQ, and you do skip CTO, uh, create minus F, SVC. So you can you can even do a apply minus f as we see. So um, and you just do kubectl get as we see. You can see right. So he told you about a cluster IP. So um, maybe if you want to uh, do a curl health check, you can go inside kubectl get po. And go inside one of the pods, use this cluster IP and uh, your, uh, I mean, go inside another nodes. So ideally we're not on a node, we are on the, some uh, another machine from where we're connecting to the master node or some other nodes in this case. So you can go ahead and just access this, but if you want to access it outside, so either you can go inside uh, this file and um, I think so, it is at this level, okay? It is an spec level, so you just do two spaces again. So you just say a uh, type. What is the type of a service? Type, it is, uh, I think so, node port. So, okay, to give you an example, what is node port? I, I think he already covered, but just to add. So when you have um, Docker, right? So when you just do Docker run minus uh, kind of uh, when you do uh, expose, when you bind the port, right? So it is actually creating one more port on your local machine that is a node and binding it to your um, pod inside a pod. So in this case, for example, if you have an application which have a cluster of 10 nodes, so when you do node port, every node will have that port assigned and whichever node you hit, it will transfer the uh, kind of request to that particular port. So as he said, right, so it's not good to have a node port because it is going to have a extra file descriptor open, extra port to be listening. And another thing, when we have a load balancer on top of node port, so it is going to add every node which is there in your cluster. So, I mean, you can go ahead and work it for dev in one, but when you go to a little more on top level, you can go ahead and start using ingress for maybe other visibilities. Like ingress is like, I think so, a better option than this when you're going in production. Yeah, so I'll just uh, do uh, click save and uh, kubectl apply, sorry. So what I prefer is like I have aliases written, so I just don't. I just do uh, cubes kgn, kdb, cube describe pods or something like that. You also can go ahead and do it. Cube apply. 
Oh, minus F and then give a service name. Okay, so now you want just go ahead and just do it like this. Uh, get not po SVC. So when you do like this, you can see you have your service port, right? So ideally, I should be able to access that application. Click on this plus. Uh, this icon. one. Next uh, okay, plus there. icon and then select port to be on host one. Uh, this one. Yeah. Okay. So you give the port that service port is it? Yeah. The node okay, port. You remember that it will be it will be somewhere around uh, thirty thousand to some some range. That is a standard range. Range. Uh, in this case, it is G one eight nine six. And then what do I do? Display port is it? Yes. Uh, question mark n equals to maybe I'll give ninety. Will that work? O M G. So uh, guys, you can see right. Okay, uh, we have this thing up, up, up here and uh, when we do a deployment, so um, you change an image and then you check over here. Uh, so maybe what you can do is you are hitting it from here and then how do you know whether it is flowing? Just to know what you can do is you can just do, do a kubectl logs. So in this case, let's, let's reduce the deployment uh, kind of a replicas by one, oh, sorry. Uh, let's also uh, why um, you can directly go ahead and do it using cube edit but it's always good to uh, have everything in sync but, but for example if you go and do in cube edit your uh, thing in your file will not be updated so when you do one and then alt e so um when you do cube cube cto get four Okay, so um, ideally it should. Okay, we didn't apply, right? We didn't apply. So we have to apply this. So when you are editing in file, you have to apply it. Okay, so you all apply. Minus so when do you use apply? When do you use create? Okay, apply create is like, for example, uh, you can use apply for uh, very like you have a uh, first time you want to create, you can use apply for any of the cases, but when you um, uh, create it for the first time, it's a good to use create. But when you use the create for the second time on the same file, it will say already you have things already there. So it is better to use apply. So maybe it was like fast, but uh, is, it was that helpful. Yep, yep. Oh, thank you. Okay, now ideally we should have one replica, is it? So we have um, one replica. These all, please ignore this. This is all your replica set, remember? Right, yeah. so maybe we can go ahead and just do a kubectl uh, uh, delete rs. So what happens when you do delete rs? It will go ahead and delete uh, nothing because the rs name is like uh, not specified. So you can just do epivo. So make sure you're not deleting the rs created by deployment. deployment. Yeah. Yeah. So when you do get pod. So you in in a moment you'll be able to see only one. This guy will disappear in some time. Okay, so now we are here. Shall, sh yes. shall we wrap it up now? I mean, yeah, we are already uh, beyond to us. We are we are uh, we'll be wrapping it up now. So just we'll check the logs and then we'll wrapping it up. Uh, we can see like this. Just to like uh, show your your uh, maybe if it is writing, then just to show that yeah, is it better to do min mini cube because if I close this browser, uh, I will lose everything, right? What do we do here? Yeah, here the, I think so. You'll lose everything. Maybe you can try using your own cluster. I mean uh, K three S K three S kind of stuff. There is something called K three S. That's uh, really awesome. So if you have um, Linux machines, you just go ahead and just, just just run this curl. That's it. You're having a cluster up. So it'll be like this. 